Hi Cancer! Welcome to your October 2016 general tarot reading. And I'm emphasizing general because I have been soliciting opinions about just doing these types of readings rather than a separate love reading. If I were to do love readings, then I would keep doing the general readings. I would never stop doing general readings. It's just that if I stuck to uh, to uh, general readings, then I wouldn't have to do love readings. So because a lot of people say that they would prefer having different readings, I'm going to do that in the short term at least, but I'm always curious to get feedback. So if you have any strong feelings either way, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Otherwise, I'll just start doing this reading. So again, this is the general energy for the month. And the first card that I always draw in these types of readings, and even in my love readings actually, I'm using the same spread, is the theme or the, I don't know if you call it the flavor of the month or the symbolism of the month of October. Okay. So, I'm trying to think about the transits, transits in October, but, you know, even if you're watching in September, there's going to be a new moon on the last day of the month, on the 30th, in Libra, which just so happens to be your fourth house. So, you know, when there's a new moon in a sign, that means the sun is in the same sign. So there's a lot of emphasis with Libra, your fourth house. And this is your natural house. This is the house that you rule of home and family. So going into October, you have this kind of concentration of energy in the home sector. And so some of what the cards represent here may actually be relationships within your family or maybe even your you know childhood contacts you're going to also have a new moon now let me see though because at the end of yes because yeah at the end of October there's going to be a new moon in Scorpio and for you Scorpio is now that's your fifth house right so i have to get this straight because i had to like uh do something i had sometimes i'm when i'm uh talking and i don't have it written down it's a bit risky because then i do it backwards but uh yeah so that's your that's your fifth house of romance so i did get a very definite feel from this general reading of more of a relationship situation going on and that has been part of my experiment this month of looking at these general readings and seeing if there's like a clear-cut energy or message coming forth on one topic versus another obviously if i were to do so i could just spin it to be anything because not only are there a lot of cancerians watching but uh, there's a lot of situations that are going on and the cards do not uh, get assigned to one particular topic over another. It's just that when you get certain cards that are the, the same theme, you start to kind of go in that direction. And I think that is pretty commonplace for people who are reading the Tarot. And so, for instance, in this one, I got how many Cups cards? I got three Cups cards out of eight. And then I also got a two of 
wands, which sometimes can indicate having to make a choice, sometimes between people because there, here's another two. So I may kind of go into a love reading against my will to some degree just because there seem to be so many cards that support it. But I, I do want to acknowledge career because for some of you this may be of a concern and you may want to be dealing with that aspect of life. The overall energy is one of kind of having maybe um, very strong boundaries. Maybe you're thinking in terms of somebody coming back into the picture. And even though this reading is for October, if you're watching in September, you may have had some sort of event happen that dealt with the past because your Mercury retrograde is occurring in your third house of communications. It's actually the house that Mercury rules, one of them. So that can really emphasize someone trying to get a hold of you, especially online, because now the internet has become the purview of the third house. And, uh, you know, I think the 11th house too, to some degree, but the third house in terms of day-to-day -day communications. So you may be wary because this person may have caused you problems in the past. Now, let's be honest here, or not honest, but let's be clear that this doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. So maybe that was a little bit much when I said that this is love. Um, it's a relationship flavor to this reading. The third house can relate to siblings. So if you have had a problem with a brother or sister, and, you know, some people do. Some people have siblings who have addictions, bipolar, some kind of situation that causes them to go into different cycles where sometimes they seem fine and then you trust them again and then they screw you over. And not just screw you over in terms of try to, you know, make you feel guilty and then you give them money or something like that, but also just in terms of turning your life upside down. I'm sure that there are a lot of people who know exactly what I'm talking about. And as a Cancerian, you're a very compassionate person and you want to be there for your family, you know, family first, as far as you're concerned. But um, by the same token, you do not want to deal with drama. And this person may bring drama into your life and you're kind of guarded. Um, it could have to do with a fire sign. It could be an ex of yours. It could be, it could be, like I say, it could be a sibling. It could be an ex. They may have um, a volatile nature. The, this would be an Aries Leo Sag, either one of those. Okay, the, you know, a fiery temperament. And let's look at the past. This is um, the Four of Cups. Somehow this kind of um, lackluster feeling was um, a theme in the past. And maybe, uh, you know, now that I think about it, it could, you know, have to do with a partner that you were with. And it might not have been that you didn't get along with this person, but you just might have realized at some point that you were not in love with him or her. And Maybe you thought you had gotten out um, scot-free, so to speak. And uh, I always wonder about these old-timey uh, expressions, if they're actually politically incorrect. I have a little of Scottish blood in me, actually. I am Irish-Scottish on one side, and I'm Puerto Rican on the other side. So I'm, like, all over the map. But anyway, um, so... The um, that that kind of contrast, you know, the the fiery, uh, the fiery element that the that is connected with the wands energy, is really something that is in stark contrast 
to the, the Four of Cups. And it may have been a situation where it might have been a difficult situation to extricate yourself from, some of you. But you were able to do so, and now that person is coming back. And we know that feeling. Um, I always call it the sleeping with the enemy syndrome. You know, like in that movie when you thought the guy was dead and they, he like... I think uh, Fatal Attraction did that one too. And it's really, you know, fun in movies, scary. But it happens in real life at least... Um, not literally, but where people, you think that your your karma is done with somebody and then all of a sudden you get that phone call or it might be a message of some sort and you're like, oh gosh, okay, now what? And if you feel that somebody is up in your, all up in your Kool-Aid <laughs> um, and you don't want them to be, there is a technique called, um, it's called something like energetic cord cutting. I'm, I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about. It's an energy healing um, thing that maybe some shamans or just energy workers, uh, sometimes light workers can perform for people. I've never had it done, but you may find it to be helpful. I, you know, am curious about it myself. I've watched on YouTube, and sometimes they have guided meditations. Maybe you can work on yourself. But it seems to be something that exists, and I certainly know what it feels like on some level, where someone has kind of latched onto you in a very subtle way. It could be an ex. It could be a parent. It could be a sibling. And you feel this bond, but it's a negative bond. And it's kind of like a psychic vampire where they ha they're they sucking you dry from a distance sometimes. And, you know, you feel drained, but you don't know what to do about it. And this might help. And, of course, you know, it is kind of um, out there. But I'm kind of like one of these people that thinks it can't hurt. So why not try it? Keep an open mind. And, you know, the worst case scenario is you're out 80 bucks. And for some people, they might not be able to afford that. That's for sure. And, you know, you might not have 80 bucks to spare like that. But if you do, and you really are serious about getting rid of this problem, you might want to try anything. And uh, so, so anyway, that might be, you might be feeling in October like on edge. Um, it's really more of a weariness. Not a weariness like tired, but a weariness like cautious about somebody who might be coming around. Now, this could be professional, though, for sure, where, you know, whenever you see wands, think career. And it could be that, you know, you have decided to go, go it alone because the nine represents aloneness, solitary energy. And it, it's so solitary in your career, whereas before maybe you were left kind of emotionally flat from whatever you were doing. And then the boss calls or the, you know, whatever the person, if you were working with somebody else, um, they call and they try to get back into your good graces. But this card, which is kind of like the present, uh, representing the present energy is the, the death card. Uh, so it looks like even if you were to become manipulated and weaken and allow somebody back in, I think that something will conspire, the universe will conspire to close that chapter. I was just reading something, I can't remember where it was, saying, oh, you know, I think it was something that I wanted to do, like a workshop, and they were talking about this particular this particular like certification but they were saying that you know things may start to change in your life where things that are no longer longer serving you will just end but it's almost like they end in a harmonious way where there doesn't have to be a lot of ugliness so this is what i'm talking about with the death card definitely in october if you're living in the northern hemisphere there is that you know, unmistakable d death 
um, you know, theme, the theme of death. And of course, I, I said this before, uh, acknowledging that some people are down under and not uh, experiencing death, but rebirth. And am I self-centered to wonder how October can be spring and how December can be summer? I mean, that just does not, I mean, that I know like in California, it's going to be hot in December, but still, I don't know. It just seems weird to me that in some parts of the world, you know, in December, it's always summer. And that, you know, I mean, what about Santa Claus? But I guess Santa Claus, you know, in the North Pole, that, that whole thing um, was a Northern Hemisphere uh, tale. So that's, I'm sure, I, I'd like to know about the Southern Hemisphere and what they do for the, the, the Christmas um, tradition. <laughs> Maybe, you know, if some of you live in Australia or New Zealand or something like that, let me know if you have a figure that represents the winter solstice and that kind of yuletide that is not, um, you know, dealing with snow or anything like that. But in any case, um, so that would be wonderful if you were to make some kind of transition in your life and it was kind of like an easy flow. That would be really um, a cool thing. And I think that's going to happen. If you feel like there's this relationship that has reared its ugly head again, I, I feel like there's going to be grace that's that you you won't have to really do the dirty work in a lot of cases but by all means you have to have boundaries that's what the nine of that's what this card is about the nine of uh, wands definitely have boundaries in your life and this is true of anyone whether you're a cancer sun or moon or rising or if you're watching for somebody else but you're a different sign altogether you know, you, you you have to be willing to say no and say it in a nice way, but in a firm way that there's no, you know, you're not like um, kind of uh, unsure of yourself. And I have a feeling that a few, if not many, Cancerians have trouble with this. I know for sure that I know for sure that Libra does and Pisces does, but I feel that Cancer does as well because you're a nurturing sign. And so you want to nourish other people, but you have to nourish yourself. You can't be depleted. And, you know, the irony is the people that have a hard time saying no, then they're really, you know, they're, they're real assholes when they finally... Um, have had enough and I'm you know I'm sorry to use profanity I couldn't think of another word but um, in other words uh, some people they let it build up build up and then finally they say I can't take it anymore no 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 and then they're um, really they're so forceful and rude about it because they they they're so resentful that they had to do it in the first place so please honor yourself at all times and realize that the only way that you can be your, at your best is if you feel like your needs are being met and there is absolutely no reason why you should have to feel like you're being selfish if you say no to something um, and it actually we need to we need to honor ourselves and that's if that's what being selfish means then so be it Maybe, you know, the, the whole word itself came about as an indoctrination to be sacrificial during the Piscean Age. And now we're getting into the Aquarian Age, and it's like very detached and very individualistic. And, you know, that's cool. We all have needs, including cancer people. Um, and the higher message is two of cups. Now, it could be that some of you have boundaries that are too uh, strong because this is a card of it could be reuniting, it could be forgiving somebody, or it could be, um, you know, taking the relationship to the next level. I have a feeling that it might be more on the forgiveness and reuniting, um, you know, uh, playing field or whatever you want to call it in that aspect because of the um, triggers to the third and fourth houses. 
So you may be dealing with family issues, siblings, parents, and maybe you had a falling out with someone and you you put your boundaries up and now you've kind of um, may need to let some people in. Maybe you were too reactive about a situation. Maybe you were too rigid about it. And maybe it is time for you to um, get back together with somebody that is close to you. Maybe the alienation has eaten away at you all this time anyhow, but you kind of pushed it aside because you wanted to be right. Now, believe me, th this is going to be only for certain people because sometimes it was absolutely the right choice. It depends on if it was more of an ego thing where you or like a an old grievance, like you always felt like your sister got preferential treatment and so you've harbored like secret resentment and then you got in an argument with her but really it was your fault and you might have to bite the bullet and admit all of those things to this person but it could be on the romantic level and again you know even in a marriage situation sometimes you might have a period where you fear that the relationship has gone stale or that you do not love that person because you don't feel this sense of excitement but it could simply be that the relationship has gotten just comfortable okay and you if you are i just in my mind the the sign taurus just kind of like was uh bursting to get out of me so let's say you are with a taurian and th that person is um, maybe when you first met that person they were very uh, on top of things trying to keep up how they looked and they were always whining and dining you and then you got married or you moved in together and they have kind of like let everything go and they want to just sit on the couch and um, and veg and they don't want to do anything you may fear that the relationship has kind of um, reached its um, peak and now it's just downhill. But it could just be a rough patch. It could just be that you need to get things going again. Okay? I do feel, though, that because the death card is here, there is something, there are going to be certainly for a good number of people who resonate with this scenario that you might have to move on but it could just mean that an old phase has died because when you get a, a card that's clearly about reuniting with someone um, you can't just ignore it and say it means something else so especially if the rest of the cards the initial cards resonated with you but it could also be on the business level that you kind of get back together with somebody who was a partner you know in that and it could be, you know, it could be a co-worker. Maybe you become partners. And, um, you know, if you were in a situation where you were dissatisfied with your employment, then, and you go it alone, you may decide that you prefer to work with somebody else and you call up somebody that you used to work with. So it can, you know, that's just an example of how it can uh, play out career-wise for some people. The card that crosses you is represented by the Knight of Wands. So this can be, um, you know, it, well, this kind of reiterates that some of you may be dealing with a fire sign, and this is kind of confirming that this person's problematic. This is an Aries Leo Sag, as I said earlier, and this person, I, I've used this term before, good time Charlie, the person who comes in, goes out, and you may think that you have fallen in love with this person and you're not really receiving the fact that this person sees you as a plaything, okay as somebody that they can call on when they happen to be in your area or they happen to be free for a night uh, from maybe even god forbid a spouse 
and they who knows what they're telling you but um i i think that for other people it could just be that the the reason that you are wary is because this person tends to be um in and out of your life and you don't feel that they are stable enough to be somebody that you can make a life with as a cancer individual now obviously i'm generalizing and that's all i can do when i'm not looking at individual charts but most cancer people that i have met tend to be very interested in a in um starting a family or having some kind of foundation and security they do not want to be left high and dry or hanging at and the, at the edge, edge of their seat you know wondering if another person is going to call them contact them come over they want to have that predictability um, so and th this is the other end of it when you when you crave too much predictability it gets into boredom and so you have to kind of walk a fine line what the attitude that benefits you at this time is represented by the two of wands so this is being someone who is willing to consider making changes in terms of you know physical location even now you see this person's holding a the world in their hands so they're really like becoming expansive in how they feel Again, because it's a two, it may just be related to choosing between two people. Now, as a one's two, it could be that passion is something that you are wanting to have in your life. But sometimes passion can be very chaotic. Be sure you can separate out passion from drama so that you can really not get swept away by somebody who is not really interested in settling down. They're more interested in just having a good time. Sometimes having a good time is exactly what you need and sometimes it is a very disturbing um, influence in your life because it's going counter to what you want and so only you can decide where you're at in your life and that will determine what which is best for you but I definitely think that some of you may be questioning whether you should be going or whether you should be staying um, with that now because of that um, that solar eclipse in the third house um, on September 1st and the fact that the eclipse can last the effect it might might be some sometime uh, even in the the going into the winter that you really see the effect of this this uh, solar eclipse it could be that you change locales in a way because the third house rules your local area so maybe that changes your neighborhood changes but I feel that if that's the case you're go it's going to usher in a whole new um, set of experiences for you it always does but some places are more significant than others um, the advice is the seven of cups I think with the advice and this usually I you could say that this means that you have options don't feel that you are limited in options um, you may think that you just have two options and you don't but the seven of cups always has a bit of nebulous sketchy energy attached to it in terms of these things because there it's cups it could even relate to your dreams you know it could be that you have a lot of aspirations but you're not really you you haven't really settled on anything for whatever reason and so I would definitely kind of if you want to make certain things happen in your life whether it's 
you know, attracting the partner who is right for you or the perfect heart-centered career that isn't like something you're mailing in, something that you're you're completely indifferent to, but something that you really feel a certain passion for, then you have to get clear on what it is that you want. This is like a person who is looking at a menu and you know how it is. You look at a menu and you see all these options, but sometimes it's afraid you're afraid to order the thing that you've never had before, or at least I am. Even though I consider myself a very um a, a person who's very willing to try new things, when it comes to food, maybe it's because I'm Taurus rising, I mean I take it very seriously and I don't want to be stuck with something that I don't like, even though I'm not I don't think I'm that picky. But uh yeah, so I mean it's really, I think it's more powerful if you can distill your passions, your hopes and wishes down to um, one or two or three things and really, um, hopefully they're all kind of interconnected and really have a game plan of how you're going to go about making them happen instead of just keeping it on the, the dream level and, uh, n you know, and having a lot of things swirling around in your head, be more, be more like um, proactive about it. And, you know, that will make things more likely to kind of manifest. The outcome is the world. So this is really cool because this is like closure. This is like you passing the test. Um, the last card of the major arcana. And so there's a... A certain sense of victory that is associated with this card. Um, the 21 reduces to a 3. 3 is a card of abundance and expansion. So it's like one door closing, another opening. And uh, you may see, you know, as I say, you're going to have a new moon in your fifth house of romance you know, on the 30th, and that might be a catalyst for a whole new uh, relationship. Maybe you're getting out of something, as I have stated earlier. And the fifth house can also be home businesses, so that's, you know, another beginning in that area. So it looks really good for you, Cancer. And, of course, because at the end of the month, Scorpio is a fellow water sign and it's a it, you know it forms a nice trine which is a flowing easy aspect it can be really a good time for you from late October going into November most of November so that's cool too I hope you enjoyed this if you'd like a private reading there is a link below this video to my website but otherwise have a great month bye